Between quaaludes and car fires, Donald Smith discovered deviance young. But it was his first sex offense at age 20 that set the pattern for his life. Right off the bat, found to be a, a sexual offender. Clearly, they didn't address his issues. Attorney Michael Bosson testified at trial about Smith's long criminal history. Really, since 1977, right? I mean, that was the first time that he actually committed a really horrible crime. After masturbating in front of two neighborhood girls, ages five and eight, Smith was labeled a mentally disordered sex offender and locked up for more than a year. But doctors found he showed little motivation to change, so they decided to release him. If that doesn't make sense, the official explanation won't help. Citing Smith's refusal to change his sexually deviant ways, doctors said Smith had, quote, received the maximum benefit possible from this program. So he was sent to jail instead, where he served a year and was released. He has resisted treatment from the get-go. Psychologist Heather Holmes, who reviewed Smith's entire psychiatric file for his 2018 trial, says everything that's wrong with him today was wrong in 1977. Meeting him in 2015, he's the same as was described since 1977 and throughout the records. One thing that didn't change is just how dangerous he was. He, he told me to get the in the pan. Doctors who recommended Smith's release had warned he remained a danger to society and was highly probable to offend again. And he did with Carrie Ann Buck in 1992. He looked at me like he was gonna kill me. Buck was 13 years old when Smith tried to kidnap her two blocks from her home before chasing her to a school playground where she hid in a slide. He said, I know you're in there, you little bitch. And you're I'm gonna find you. <laughs> Later that day, Smith tried to lure two other girls into his van. That's a face I'll never, never forget. I see his face every time my kids go outside to play. Convicted of the kidnapping, Smith could have gotten life in prison, but ended up serving just six years. He got a lot of breaks. He also slipped through the cracks. Uh, semen on his chest and KY lubricating jelly on his hands. In this 1998 case, police found Smith in his car, his pants unbuckled. Along with a bottle of vodka and a bottle of urine, police found drawings of penises, along with a note that said, I want to see you hang by your neck. Again, pretty alarming. Disturbing as the case might sound, nothing came of it. Mark Khalil, who prosecuted the Cherish Periwinkle case, had never even heard of it. I mean, given all of the attention this case has had, you know, I had never heard about that either. Right, and neither did I. I, in my review of, of all of his history prior to me testifying at the trial, I did not come across that as well. One reason the case may have gotten buried is because it's classified by the court system as a traffic crime. Also, around that time, Smith was getting arrested and released constantly. Prosecutors got a chance to stop that cycle in 1999. That year, a new law began allowing prosecutors to permanently confine sexual predators. And local prosecutors filed the paperwork to lock Smith away for good. But three years later, the state dropped the case. Prosecutors noted that Smith, at that point, hadn't physically harmed his victims. In exchange, Smith agreed to undergo chemical castration and attend therapy. But within a month, he already wasn't complying. His doctor sent an urgent warning to prosecutors saying that Smith posed, quote, a clear present and future danger to children and the community. But nothing was done. The decision to let Smith off was later ridiculed by state attorney Melissa Nelson when she reviewed that disposition statement during the Cherish Periwinkle case. Wow, that is Dr. Bob. Her comments can be seen on this document obtained exclusively by First Coast News. The question's like, what is that? And question like, seriously? Question mark, question mark. What? You know, so there's a lot of pushback from whoever wrote these comments. Boston didn't know that Nelson wrote the comments, but he says they raise legitimate questions. Or why the prosecutor chose at the time not to just pursue it through the, the jury and let the jury decide, I, I don't have an answer for. That's a great question. And it wasn't just attorneys that let Smith off the hook. 
After a crack cocaine arrest sent Smith back to prison on a parole violation, he was again reviewed for permanent detention in 2006. I don't know how this conclusion was reached. This time, the doctor said he didn't qualify. I was just exquisitely surprised. The doctor who evaluated him agreed with every other doctor in Smith's past that he was a mentally disordered sex offender. But when it came to permanently confining him, he said no. I wondered if it was a typo at the end that said he did not meet criteria. Because if this person with these characteristics that has been described as dangerous, as a pedophile, is not meeting criteria because he's considered dangerous as, as a sexual predator, then I don't know who would be. Amazingly, even that wouldn't be the last missed opportunity. I told him I'm outside, then he says, do you wear bras? And I said, no, but I got some. Then I asked if I had a hair on my private, and I said, no. Christina Hand was 10 in 2009 when Smith called, pretending to be a child abuse investigator. He wanted to examine her, he said, to see if she'd been sexually assaulted. I mean, it's kind of scary that it all happened. Now 19, she remembers her grandma agreeing to drive her to McDonald's to meet Luckily Smith. Luckily, her mom intervened and called police. They ended up going out that night and finding him, and they busted his nose. I can remember that. Smith could have gotten 30 years if the case had gone to trial. But Han's mother was reluctant to put her little daughter on the stand, and prosecutors made a deal. After two years in the Duval County Jail, on May 31, 2013, Smith was released. Three weeks later, a final missed opportunity. Jack, the 9 Robinson. The night Cherish Periwinkle was killed. I think my daughter's been taken, taken by a stranger. Called to a Northside Walmart at 11 o'clock at night, police initially dismissed the child abduction as a custody dispute. If they would have acted faster, they would have found Cherish in ample time. Cherish's mother, Rain Periwinkle, says at first she was treated like a suspect. Detective Cullen looked at me and he said, you did it, I know you did it, and you're going to prison. The doubt spelled delay. It would be three hours before the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office started the Amber Alert process, and another two hours before the alert was issued. Do I think that, that we would have found her in time to save her? Probably not. But if that was your eight-year-old little girl, would you want us to try? Once officers began to work the case in earnest, things went fairly quickly. Police found the van the next morning, arrested Smith without incident, and began an investigation that ultimately landed him on death row. They also found Cherish Periwinkle, or rather, they found her body stuffed under a log in a tidal marsh, her long hair floating in the water. You have the following rights under the United States Constitution. You do the not story's end statement. was tragic, and tragically unsurprising. It's been present throughout the past, gosh, 40 years. In fact, you have an opinion that he is of the most dangerous sex offenders you have ever evaluated. Yes, he is. Definitely tells throughout the the course of his conduct that this guy was a pretty seriously sick individual. Go to the dictionary and you look up sexual predator, Donald Smith's picture is gonna be right there. With photojournalist Nick Marone, Ann Schindler, First Coast News, on your side.